Hey, love cats. I'm here with my bobes, Trevor and Randy. Trevor and Randy. We'll see how long they last. I've got some snacks here just in case. This one's Trevor, and this is Randy. And these are my bobes. Here you go. They're so gentle. I dragged my little couch over from my sitting area in my office so uh, they could sit here with me and do the video since a lot of you asked me um, to see more of them. That's a lot. Oh, my boobs! I love you! Oh, I love your boobs! Um, I call them my boobs because when they were puppies, I called them my babies. And they were always my babies. And um, I also call my husband baby. So it got kind of weird because I was calling everyone baby. And they were starting to grow up. They kind of looked like little clowns to me. So um, it kind of came out Bobo, like Bobo the Clown. And the, I don't know. And then... Um, my boobs! Um, I can just say boobs! And um, they'll both come. So I can tell now... The sound, by the sound of their breathing, who is who when I'm got my eyes closed. Um, but in the beginning, I really couldn't. I couldn't tell yet. And so they both come to Bobes. This is my cowbo because he walks like a cowboy. He like saunters like a cowboy. This is my cowbo and this is my bunny bo because Randy looks like a bunny. Who are my good Bobes? Do you want those snacks? Oh, I love you. <laughs> That's pretty much how I talk to them all the time. And um, I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> this is my big bow. Are you my big bow? You love your mama? Yeah. I sing lullabies to him, and he immediately starts yawning and falls asleep. So I'm actually super excited about this new vlogging series, and it's, I haven't stopped thinking about it. So thank you for already kind of giving me what I lost back. It just feels alive in this space again, and it's really exciting. And I feel like I've been adding a lot to YouTube in the last week just to sort of like make it not look like a wasteland because I hadn't posted for like years and I have done hair hair tutorials and um, things and I never really checked it because I wasn't sort of active on the channel so, so thank you so much for all your suggestions and your comments and questions and uh, for making me feel excited again about my job and I wouldn't really have this job if it wasn't for you guys so thank you so much um, I think from the beginning I went into it with this sort of like live what you love that's always been my sort of motto like live what you love and why would we spend our lives um you know miserable we what I've learned about regret and age is that I'm more upset about the things I didn't do than any of the things I did do so as silly as I acted in my early 20 late teens and early 20s and as ridiculous as uh, you know I obviously did ridiculous things because life wouldn't be the same without acting a fool once in a while because that's fun. I, re I regret spending so much time sad in my 30s about not being able to get pregnant. I regret um, sort of giving in to so much anxiety and fear in my life in my 20s and allowing it to take over and allowing it to become who my identity and who I was. So, Oh, you want to come back, Randy, do you? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Hello! <laughs> don't regret much. I, the things I regret are the things I didn't do and the, thing, the years that I spent afraid. And, you know, when I think back in my 30s, I regret spending so much time being so sad about not being able to get pregnant. Like it was just, for anyone who's dealing with infertility, it's, I, it's so hard and it's so upsetting. But like in the end, in the end, here I am with no kids. But when I look back and think about how many years I spent being sad about it and identifying with it, I'm mad at myself because, God, I'm almost 40 now and I was younger then and I could have been doing other things instead of living out of fear and regret is not something that I really ever felt so much in my life um, because I'm pretty happy with the way my life has turned out so far. I think I'm kind of one of those people who thinks um, like the best is still ahead and I've had a pretty amazing life, I think. Obviously, we've I've had ups and downs and I come from a humble background begins <laughs> but my like a, my 38 and 39th year that I started really worrying about regret it started sort of last uh, December maybe and I you know I started meditating for about 20 minutes every morning uh, about a year ago in August and it has done wonders for my overall well-being and for my anxiety levels and for everything it's one of those things that you just do and you don't really see a result right away or a difference but like a month and a half in all of a sudden something changes and all of a sudden your headspace is different all of a sudden there's like this open matter this open gray space that didn't exist before and all of a sudden you have these tools to 
to cope with things that you couldn't before. It just, I don't know how to explain it. It just sort of happens and it's incredible. Again, and it's not overnight, but it's, you know, a month and a half in, I realized it. And so I would something like, well, this is easy enough to just keep doing. It's 20 minutes a day. And I just, I listened to a guided meditation and, uh, from Oprah and Deepak. And, uh, a year later, I, I'm not going to say that I don't deal with anxiety anymore because I do, but not even close to the same level. It's kind of comes like when I'm nervous about something, when you would normally sort of get anxiety. But for someone who, if you deal or have dealt with chronic anxiety where you sort of wake up anxious and you're like, how did I just get anxious for no reason? I haven't even left the bed yet. It's incredible. I su highly suggest it. I mean, obviously do what you're doing, but I, I, I'd like to say that I hike every single day but I don't. On my good days, we hike every day for almost 45 minutes to an hour. Sometimes we get busy and some things happen and um, we do it only three times a week or four times a week or two times a week or I get sick and we do it no times a week. I think and something I've learned later in life are the things that I do that are healthy for me every single day are the things that at the end of the day make me feel good. Like, oh, maybe I didn't get my work done or oh, maybe something weird happened or maybe I feel bad about myself or something happened and I just don't feel great. But you know what? I meditated, I walked or I hiked. I ate well, you know, there's a list of things that like you do every day that at the end of the day you can be like, well, I did these things for myself and so that makes me feel good. And if you put your sort of health first, you just can't go wrong. I just, I, with I started getting anxiety when I was about 24 and it was right after I moved in with my then boyfriend for the first time and a lot of things happened at the same time and so it was hard to tell what caused it and for so much of my life my anxious years I spent trying to figure out why 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 is this happening why am I like this now what I didn't used to be like this why all of a sudden why because I, I always thought if I had an answer I would be healed like I could just fix myself and that's just not how it works and you know years and years later it, it took me you know, it's over 10 years in this sort of just like constant spiral fear mindset. The level of panic running through my body at all times was pretty high, between 70 and 100% at all times for, for so us. many years. And I don't like medication, so I went on it for a while and I didn't like it. Um, but now I keep some Xanax on hand for those times that I am spiraling out of control and I can't um, handle myself. But I think I just wanted to go into my 40s fresh and new and not uh, stuck in past crisis or past obstacles that became part of who I was. And I can't take them away now, but I, I can't spend another 10 years crying because I can't get pregnant. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't. It's just a waste of time. I've, there's too many other things to do. This life is too amazing. And so I think I'm getting back to sort of living what I love uh, work-wise. You know, the level of anxiety is amazing. I, again, highly, highly suggest meditation. It's, I didn't know how to do it. It felt weird to me. It felt religious. It's not. And if you are religious, it goes with it. Again, I listen to Oprah and Deepak's every day. Oprah talks for like a minute and a half. Then Deepak talks for about three or five minutes, maybe five. And then he gives you a mantra, like so hum and you just he puts on music and then uh you just repeat so hum so hum in your head and until you hear the ding and then it's over and it it's that simple and obviously your mind's going to wander and anytime you catch yourself in your mind wandering you just bring it back back so hum so or whatever every day it's a different mantra this morning i think it was namaste which was a first usually sometimes it's just um i basically wake up in the morning i grab my phone i hit my meditation app and i just play um well right now there's the free uh one happening and so i just i log in and listen to the free one every day but i have two others downloaded onto my um meditation app, which I love, and I will download this one as well. I think they're 39 or $49 at the end of the free 21 days. And they're so worth it to me because as much, so, you know, I've been doing it for a year now and as much as I can kind of 
think of a mantra and meditate on my own. And sometimes I do for a few minutes or five minutes or just, I still like the guided meditation and I like the positive words in the morning, right when I wake up, it just, it sets up my day. And I was like, Oh, it's free. I'm going to try it. I've been wanting to meditate and this might be the way that gets me to make it a daily habit, like brushing my teeth. And that's what I wanted meditation to turn into something that I just, that was just part of my everyday life. It, and it has, and it's amazing. And it's easy in a way that other, you know, that you don't think it is because it feels like, I don't know how to meditate. This feels weird. Oh, I don't know. Um, but it's not. I don't even sit. I still, I'm in bed. Like I'm laying. It's incredible. I can't, I cannot say enough. Obviously I'm not, I don't work with them. I'm not sponsored. I'm, you know, they're my favorite. And even after the first one I did ended last August, I looked for other, I looked for other, um, guided meditations like on YouTube and stuff. And I didn't really find any others that I liked better. Okay, if you're so. dealing with anxiety, I highly suggest it over anything else. Obviously exercise and sunlight and, you know, it's, stay on your medication if you are and it's working for you. But in addition to all those things, I, and if you're not on doing any of those things, it's uh, really incredible. More than anything else I've ever tried. It, it changes everything. So. I'm finally in a place where it's not my normal. It used to be my normal. Like anxiety was just my normal. I was constantly, I was just like, uh, inside, like just revved up inside all the time. And now I can see like going oh. to get in the car and you know, if I think about driving down to LA, like I'm like, Oh God, I don't like the traffic, like just lights that anxiety trigger right up. But it's like specific events now that may cause me a little bit of nervousness and anxiety. Like, yeah, I was previously instead of just like, anxiety, panic being my norm. And so can we talk about this right here? It changes the neurotransmitters in your brain. It changes everything. It's not just like I'm walking around in rainbows and sunshine now and everything is positive and great. It's not that it's like, obviously I've still have shitty days. Obviously I still, especially around my period. Um, but overall it's just incredible. So I highly recommend that. Bob. Um, so I cut my bangs at the beginning of the year. Um, I wanted something new, kind of like a new style, and it covers up my forehead. And so <laughs> there's something about seeing my forehead every day and the new sort of lines that appear on it. It made me feel old, and sometimes overhead lighting just makes me sad, and having bangs just covers it all the time. Like, I never have to see it. I always think, like, bangs over Botox, because I don't get Botox. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just am terrified of it still. And so um, I haven't done it, and... Uh, God, sometimes I really want to. Yeah. And and again, like I don't care. I'm just damn just scared of it. So I thought for now, bangs work are working out because I never have to yeah, see yeah. my forehead anymore. And uh, it worked. They're they're pretty easy. They they do grow fast. So I have to get my hair done a lot sooner than I used to. I used to go forever because my my hair takes so long. To ha I have so much hair that it takes so long to ha in the salon. Like my stylist doesn't book anyone else on the days that I come in. <laughs> like she only books me because. Uh, it takes forever. So uh, generally I just get out of the shower and towels around my hair and the front down and I'll shake it around a lot, flip it a lot <laughs> just so it like towel dries. And then I b just blow dry straight down without a brush or anything. My, my bangs in the front of my hair. If today I blew dry the whole thing and then I took a wide barrel curling iron and just did this over it. Um, to just sort of smooth it out. But generally I like to use one heat styling tool at a time. Like, so if I'm going to blow dry my hair, I always have to blow dry the front now. So I just basically do this area and then I'll let this sort of air dry. And then the next day I'll use a curling iron on it. So, uh, I don't have to like straighten it. It's, this is my hair. It's just straight. I don't have a lot um, of bang maintenance necessarily. And usually I'll wash my hair like, uh, so I washed it today. I won't wash it tomorrow. I'll wash it the next day. Unless it's still looking good, then I, I'll, I'll just put it in a bun and leave the front down. And then I'll use pow dry powder shampoo, uh, which I love, in blonde. So um, I'm loving this vlogging idea. So is Trevor. Can't you tell? <laughs> um, again, it makes me feel connected to you guys in a new way. Again, I just, I wonder why I didn't start it sooner. Seriously. Um, it just feels new again and feels like it did in the beginning. So thank you. A lot of the questions okay. were about the dogs, which I think I covered. Um, so I guess that's it for now. Subscribe um, and become a love cat because I love you. And um, this is so much fun. Thank you so much for sort of making me feel alive again. I love it. And Trevor does too. <laughs> Randy's oversleeping by my door. He wants out, guys.
So come back for dog videos once a week of these bubs. And um, I'm so glad we're back together again. <laughs> That's what it feels like. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.